Okay, we're going to talk about some more Pla uh, Laplace transforms, specifically what is referred to as translations and partial fractions. All right, so we're going to apply the partial fraction rule number one. Uh, rule number one deals with linear factors of partial fractions. So if we have this um, fraction, what we want to do is decompose it into uh, a consequence of fractions based on, since we're to the third power here, uh, I want to make sure that I represent fractions as uh, the first power of 1, and since s is only to the first power, I don't need a, a polynomial s on top, I just need a um, constant. And so there's our second constant for the square and our third constant for the cube. Now, uh, what we have to do is find the common denominator. So uh, this is what I can do for my common denominator. And then we need to do some more math uh, after this. Uh, so applying the uh, common denominator, what I get is uh, this polynomial. And what we need to do is do some algebra and group together terms. So if I do all that al algebra and I, I get uh, this, these terms grouped together, and so then I apply this strategy, there is no... Uh, this is the coefficient in front of s squared, so there's no s squared over here, so a has to equal 0. Um, this is the coefficient in front of s, so the coefficient I have in front of s here is 1, so that has to equal 1. And uh, this are the coefficients, are constants, and that has to be set equal to 5. So I've got my three equations and um, three unknowns. So we should be able to solve this. Um, and it, then if we do solve it, we get c equals 10, b equals 1, and a equals 0. Now, how does that go back into our decomposition? What I can say is that fraction should be equal to uh, this, the sum of these two fractions. All right, let's apply... Now, rule number two, that deals with quadratic factors of the partial fractions. So let's say we have uh, this fraction, and I got to find um, my, uh, I got to decompose it into its fractions. To do that, I have, again, my denominator has two powers. Or is squared here, so I have to have two factors. I have to have it once uh, to the power of 1 and then once to squared. Now you'll notice that my number here, if I multiplied this out, I would have it as squared. So I need to put a polynomial of one order less on top, and I've done that. And now I have to find my common denominators, and so I can write it this way. And now I have to uh, uh, add this together. And if I, if I do that, I get this. So what I need to do is multiply everything out and group terms. If I do that, I get this. Now what we see here is that I have AS cubed, but no s cubes over there, so a is going to have to be 0 again. And uh, if we do that for all the terms, I get my uh, a equal to 0, I get my minus 4a plus b equal to 1, I get my uh, minus 5a minus 4b plus c equal to 0, and then I get my 
uh, constant 6 should equal a minus 5b plus d. And then I've got four equations, and I also have four unknowns. We should be able to solve this. And if we solve this, I get these values for my coefficients. And then I can take those and plug them back into my partial fraction decomposition. And these are the uh, decomposition fractions that I will end up with. All right, so let's talk about translation on the s-axis. So uh, we will have to take a transform of the following function, which is uh, here I got some exponential times some function. In order to do that transform, what I have, have to do is I have to know the Laplace transform of the function. And if I do know the Laplace transform of the function, then the Laplace transform of e to the at times that function is equal to the Laplace transform of the function, but not of s, of s minus a. What does that mean? Everywhere you would see the s in this Laplace transform, you replace it with s minus a. And that's the translation on the x uh, sorry, the translation on the s-axis here. So um, uh, now if you want to do an inverse Laplace transform of this, uh, out pops the exponential function. So um, let's practice. Let's take the Laplace transform of this function. So what is f of s? f of s is just t to the fourth power. And we can look that up on the Laplace transform table. It's equal to this. So now I want to take the Laplace transform of t to the fourth power times e to the pi t. So everywhere I see an s in this trans this transformation, I replace it with s minus pi, and I get the transformation for this function. All right, so um, let's try to find the Laplace transformation of this function. What is f of s? Again, that's going to be the Laplace transform of the cosine of 2, uh, two times t minus pi divided by 8. So I need to find the Laplace transform of that function. So uh, what I need to do is rewrite it in a form that shows up in the table. Uh, this cosine term does not show up in the table. So what I need to do is apply this trig identity. And if I apply that trig identity, I get this expression where we can figure out the cosine of uh, pi divided by 4 and the sine of pi divided by 4. And that's equivalent to this. So what I have to do is find the Laplace transform of this function. So uh, the Laplace transform of this function is equivalent to the Laplace transform of this function, or rewriting it that way, or I can rewrite it this way by applying properties of Laplace transform. Then I uh, all I have to do is take the Laplace transform, which is this, and then I can uh, group terms. Okay, so now I found f of s. Now I have to do the translation. So uh, everywhere I see an s, I replace it with s minus a minus one half, and that becomes my Laplace transform. And I can 
uh, looks like I've grouped together the twos. This looks like I've grouped together this two with this uh, uh, one half. All right, um, let's find some more Laplace transforms. So we got to find inverse Laplace transforms. So let's see if we can uh, find the inverse Laplace transform of this function. So what I need to do is write it out with partial fraction decomposition. Find the common denominator. And then do some algebra. Uh, multiply it out and I get this function and then group my common terms and find my equations and so if I do that I get these three equations and so I have three equations and three unknowns I can solve them and so if I solve them I get these values for a b and c now I can plug that back into my partial fraction decomposition and now I need to find the inverse Laplace transform. I apply the, the distribution property of the Laplace transforms. And now these uh, show up in uh, these show up in the Laplace transform table. And uh, so they show up as uh, S plus one well that's I could write that as s minus a minus one so that's like an exponential showing up and then uh, so this would be like one over s squared which is equivalent to t the inverse Laplace transform of t and then I have another Laplace tra uh, translation of a Laplace transform that shows up as uh, e to the minus t t squared and we're done all right let's look at another problem let's take the laplace transform of this inverse laplace transform of this function so i got to do my partial fraction decomposition i can factor out uh, s in the denominator and then factor uh, the rest of the part of the denominator and I get uh, these roots for my denominator and now I got to write it out in terms of partial fraction decomposition and then find my common denominator and then uh, do some more algebra so what I got to do is make these two fractions equal uh, to do that I've got to make uh, these two equal. And if we multiply everything out, I get this representation. And then I have to make sure the coefficients are equivalent on both sides, so there's nothing in front of the s squared, so I get this equation. And then this has to be equal to 5, and this minus 2 has to be equal to minus 4. So I can easily solve for a real quickly, and uh, then if I solve these three equations, I get a equals 2, b equals 1, and c equals minus 3. Now I can plug them back into my partial, comp my partial fraction decomposition. And now I can take the Laplace transform, or I should say inverse Laplace transform. These all show up in the tables, uh, and so uh, I will get this inverse Laplace transform. Okay, so let's use this to solve a differential equation. So what we're going to do is solve this differential equation. So the first thing I have to do is find the inverse Laplace transform of my differential equation. And what that leads me to is this expression after finding the Laplace transforms of my uh, derivatives. 
Now I'm going to plug in what all my initial conditions are for the function itself, the derivative of the function, the second derivative function, and the third derivative of the function. If I do that, we're left with this equation. Now what I want to do is group all my similar terms together. And if I do that, I have this. Now I want to solve for x. So if I solve for x, I get this expression. So uh, I want to solve my differential equation, so I need to find the, uh, the, f the roots of the denominator. And when I do that, now I can do partial fraction decomposition. And, and now I need to figure out what my coefficients are. And that, so I need to find my common denominator add everything together, make sure my numerators are going to be equal. In order to do that, I have to multiply everything out in, in group terms. And when we make sure that the coefficients on the left-hand side of the equal sign and the right-hand side of the equal sign are the same, I get these four equations. So now I need to solve those four equations for uh, my coefficients, and if I do that, I get these values for a, b, c, and d. I can put them back into my uh, partial fraction decomposition. I get this, and now I need to take the inverse Laplace transform of that. So in order to do that, I have to get a power of uh, Let's see, a power of what? Uh, for this, uh, since I have 4 squared, I need a power of 2 on there. So I'm going to multiply by 2 and divide by 2 at the same time. And then here, I need to get a power of, of 3 up there. So I'm going to multiply by 3 and divide by 3. And then now, when I do that, I can take the Laplace transforms. They show up in my function, in my tables. And this is what I get for my inverse Laplace transform or that is the solution to my differential equation.